Hey everybody, uh, this is Mr. MathBlog. This lesson we're going to be doing some construction. So I have this little compass over here. Don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. So when you go to that, if you haven't figured this out yet, you probably have. Uh, here's the Integrated Math 1. I'm teaching Integrated Math 2 this year, so you'll see those lessons being uploaded also. But when you click that, it's going to be loaded right down here. And so... Uh, it says they're due to the heavy spring that I had. Uh, these are this is summertime. It's in the middle of July right now. Anyways, so I'll, I'll try and get the rest of these uh, modules uploaded. Okay, so here's our, our question: How can we be sure that the result of a construction is valid? Okay, let's start off with uh, constructing the perpendicular bisector to line L right there. Okay, so here's the steps. From that point Q, make an arc on both sides of line L. So we take this compass right here and we, we put the pointy right here. Okay, take this lesson is going to take me a little bit longer because, uh, because of the constructions. Whoops, my pen is a little bit thick. Let me, let me thin that down. Okay, sorry about that. So here we go. I'm going to arc it on that side and then take it all the way over here and then arc it over here on this side, and that's what that's talking about. So I did that right here, okay? All right, let me move this out of the way here. So, and then the next step says to, uh, from those arcs, make congruent arcs on one side of line L. Okay, so what that means is we're gonna take this compass and we're gonna uh, arc it on one side of line L from both endpoints, from both of these marks right here. Let me stretch this out just a little bit more. All right, and then, so we do this arc right here, and then we take it over here with the same compass opening, and then we make sure to arc it uh, where it intersects this other one right there. So I've got to arc that right there. Okay, let me move that out of the way. And so there's that right there. So for, uh, and to make that point P and construct line PQ. So this is going to be point P, and then we're going to do a line, get the straight edge right there. Make sure you have a straight edge when you're doing this in class, and you're going to construct that line right there. Okay, now, uh, from uh, Q, make an arc that's congruent to PQ. So I'm going to get my compass opening and make an arc so it's congruent to PQ. So i got to bring that right about there and then close it up. Let's see these take quite a while right here. So that length right there, uh, and we're going to do it on the other side. It says make it an opposite ray, making it uh, QP prime over here. Okay, so here's QP prime right there. And so what we've done is we've created a perpendicular bisector right there. So uh, this segment right here from P to P prime right there is the perpendicular bisector. So Whoops, these little markings should go right here. It's bisecting. No, it's not. It's bisecting this segment. That's right. So so uh, this side equals this side right here. And then this is perpendicular right there. So we just created the perpendicular bisector. Okay. So P prime is the reflection of P through line L. So if we can put a mirror here, and I can't do that on this uh, flip chart right here. But if I can put a mirror here and look through, this would be the reflection over there on that side right there, okay? All right, so now we're going to construct and justify the copy of an angle, okay? So steps to do this right here, okay? So we're going to draw a ray. So there's a ray with endpoint D, okay? It's just so it's going to be right there. We're going to copy the angle right here at D right there, okay? So the next step is, let me move that out of the way. We're going to draw an arc that intersects both rays of uh, angle A over there, okay? So we're just going to take this over there, and then uh, we're going to... Uh, Make sure it goes to both sides. I don't know what side it is on the next flip chart right there. And we're going to label these inner, these points right here, B and C right there. Okay, let me move that out of the way. And then we're going to do the same opening uh, uh, from here. So we're going to take this and put the pointy right here and do the exact same opening right here. And we're going to label this point, point E. Okay, so so whatever this opening is right here has to be the same as this opening right there. So I did that right there, okay, and labeled it point E. Okay, and now we're going to set the compass uh, to the length of BC. Okay, so that means we're going to put the pointy right here, and we're going to close this up so it goes right down here, and then we're going to make sure that it goes right through there and we're going to, this is how you check, I tell kids I want to see those arc marks right there and then we're going to do the same opening down here and put the pointy at E 
okay and just do the same thing right there okay and then so I did that right there and uh, okay so the next step is is uh, we're gonna make ray df and so so we're gonna make this ray right here going right through there and so df so now angle D down here is gonna be congruent to angle A and so here's here's why you guys okay so now we're gonna construct so what we're gonna do is make uh, so we've made these two angles right here and we're gonna prove that these two angles are congruent and we're gonna do that by making triangles and make the triangles congruent and then we can say by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, then those uh, angles are congruent. Okay, so now construct the triangle. So, so which segments are congruent and how do we know this? All right, well, we know that these segments are congruent because they were created by the same radius right here, whatever that radius of the circle that went around right there. Okay, and similarly, um, uh, this side is congruent to this side right here because it was from this radius right here, okay, from whatever this uh, compass opening was right there. And same for that third side. So are those triangles congruent? Yes, by side, side, side. Can you see that? Side, side, side. It's important to mark that right there. Then we can say that their uh, angles are congruent by CPCTC. All right, so let's construct the angle bisector. Okay, I'm going to go kind of fast right here. So, um, so we're going to draw an arc intersecting both sides of angle A. So I've already done that right here, okay? And then from uh, these parts right here that we labeled B and C, we're going to put pointy right here, and we're going to arc it out here and put whatever that compass opening is, put pointy over here and arc it over there. Let's see if I can do that right there. So uh, that's going to go, and then, whoops, and then we're going to... Arc it out here. I better stretch that out a little bit more. That's all right. It'll probably be okay. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. And then we do the same compass opening over here, whatever that compass opening is. We do that from here and then arc it. And then where those intersect, that's what we want to label that as point D right there. Okay. So there it is right there. I did a bigger compass opening from here and here, but they are the same. Okay, and then uh, we draw the ray right there, and so that ray is gonna be our angle bisector, and so we're gonna go ahead and prove that right here, okay? So it constructs in those two triangles right there, okay? And so um, uh, see those two triangles, triangle uh, ABD and triangle ACD, we're gonna prove that those triangles are congruent because they have the same compass openings that uh, this side equals this side and similarly this side equals this side because it was this compass opening right here was the same as this compass opening right here okay so those sides are equal this side equals itself by the reflexive property so those triangles are congruent by side 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 again okay so by CPCTC again this angle right here equals this angle right here so if these two angles are equal then this has to be the angle bisector right there the definition of the angle bisector okay so here we're going to uh, prove perpendicular bisectors so construct a perpendicular bisector of a segment okay so here's a segment remember remember a segment has endpoints right there so we're going to draw an arc on the uh, centered at A on top and bottom of AB. Okay, so there's an arc right there. Okay, now um, I think in the tech book they just made this, you know, uh, a semicircle going around right there. Now, whatever that opening was, we flip it around and do the same from B over there. Okay, so there's that right there. And then we construct uh, the segment CD, so there's that right there. And now we'll prove that that's the perpendicular bisector, okay? So the points C and D, uh, this point C and D are equidistant from the endpoints of segment AB because they're just the radius away from this circle. Can you see that this radius right here and this radius are the? It's just the same radius of this circle right here. So this segment and this segment are congruent. Similarly, this segment and this segment are congruent. So they're equidistant from the endpoints of segment AB. And so by the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem, which says if they're equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, 
uh, then uh, they lie on the bisector of AB. And since the two points determine a line, then CD must be that perpendicular bisector of AB. Okay, kind of weird, huh? All right, so it says use a straight edge and a piece of string. Well, I can't do a piece of string on a flip chart right here. So I'm going to use this as my piece of string right here. Okay, and we're going to make an equilateral triangle that has one uh, side as AB as its length right here. Okay, so whatever your string length is, stretch it out. So put pretend like your thumb is right there, and then you're going to stretch it out. Uh, so your finger is nice and... Uh, uh, pulls that string straight right there and then what you do is is you pull that and, and put a piece of um, uh, or put a, a pencil in your string and then you arc it right up here make sure it's nice and straight and then you do the same over here same radius of the circle right here and then nice and straight string and you do that and it says we're going to label that right there okay so stretch the string uh, to the length of AB and make an arc above on both sides of A and B and we're going to call it C okay so there it is right there all right and then we connect um, uh, a, B, and B, C right there, and then that makes a nice equilateral triangle because, let me move this out of the way right there, because A, C, and A, B, and um, uh, they're, the, they're the radii of the same circle or congruent circles right there, so they have all three sides are equal, that means it's an equilateral triangle. All right, kind of a tricky lesson, you guys, if you're in my class, that would be your assignment right there. Take care.